So we're looking for the adjustments there to be over a longer period of time. The annual programs fund is invested moderately between those two so that we do have guarantee that the BDF portion of that fund is never touched so that it's always available. As a result of the Rotary Strategic Plan and the Foundation's involvement, I understand that the Foundation is reshaping the grants process under future vision. Could you tell us what happened? There are a little horse this morning. That's unusual for me. There are six areas of focus that uh, the Foundation is uh, concentrating on. And I will tell you there's not any project that you haven't done that would fit in one of those six areas of focus. There were, starting July the 1st of 2013, you will have what is called, will it be the plan, not the future vision plan, it will be the plan, because it fully is implemented on July the 1st of 2013. So your money that you give, 50% of that money comes back to you. You can use 50% of that for district grants. So you have a district grants committee that would evaluate how those grant funds are to be utilized. It's kind of like a block grant, except you do have to present a budget ahead of time. <coughs> and also you have to then have some a stewardship committee within your district that would guarantee that those funds are properly spent, sign off on them, and then you send that back in to Rotary. The other 50% is what they call global grants. Uh, that's similar to the matching grant, except it's in the six areas of focus, and you can use those funds and get matches for that. The minimum grant there is $15,000. So you have to have at least a $15,000 grant in order to do that. The intent is that we could do bigger projects, more sustainable projects, and the key ingredient to any of these is going to be the sustainability. Sustainability is the real thing that we're looking for. <coughs> for example, we have drilled many wells that have gone dry. We don't know how many wells we have that are out there that are dry or we've got arsenic in them because they weren't properly done and they weren't done with sustainability. So uh, we have uh, one district, uh, 6860, uh, that is a, a pilot district. I would encourage you to work, go online, attend those webinars that's online so that you can learn more about Future Vision, because it is here that we are still making some changes to it. A lot of people say you cannot do GSE. Well, you can do GSE. That won't be the name in all probability because there's a meeting in June of where we'll discuss that. But you just have to take that out of your district funds. If you want a vocational training team, which means that they're all teachers, all doctors, all people, engineers, or architects working on buildings, or water projects, or anything, then what you have there is global. And those are funded out of the global uh, money.
if you're in Bangkok, I hope you'll take the time to, among your other 40,000 people that are going to be there, to look at around and meet some people and talk to them about some of the needs. But one of the things I think we tend to forget in this, in our area and all throughout North America, you can have matching grants or global grants in your own community. People just don't think about having money from Germany or Austria or Switzerland or somewhere outside the United States that's not a restricted currency uh, country to do grants within the United States. If you look down at the Texas border, there's a lot of opportunities from people from Mexico to do work within uh, Arizona, Texas, California, and that area. Uh, people from overseas, especially in Germany, uh, either come through uh, Florida to have host hospitality before they go to the uh, International Assembly, or they'll go to Rochester, New York. So why don't we share and let them come send some of that money back into here? And so it can be done, and there may be a project within your club that you know in your area. Maybe a literacy project, maybe a water project. Uh, don't always assume that everywhere in the United States we have clean, potable water uh, that's deliverable to the uh, pipes and stuff of all utility companies. So it works both ways, but it's a matter of finding interest in a project and talking to your governor elect and grass chair. I guess one thing I'd like to follow up on what John said we, we talk about a year from now, and it'll actually be at the end of your terms as president uh, of your Rotary Clubs, when Future Vision will no longer be a Future Vision, it'll be the current vision of the Rotary Foundation. And I think there's a misconception that it's all change. If you really look at what is currently in place, and out of the six districts here, five of you are on the... <coughs> the foundation program that has existed for a number of years, it's not that different. It's really not. If you think about, and sometimes, you know, you've got to think back to history, how we got to where we are. For the five non-pilot districts, what you're doing is you have district simplified grant money. You get to elect, it can be up to 20% of, in those districts it comes back, that can be used locally. Well, that's very similar to what's going to be uh, the grant money that the district will control when it, in the future vision plan, or the, what will be the current vision plan, where you have grant money that the district has versus the global grant money. So you really have, you know, a lot of the same. You actually will have more money that's available in to be used locally or it can be used internationally. And as John was saying, that side of the money can be used to make a traditional type group study exchange team. I mean, that has been probably, John, correct me if I'm wrong, but the biggest resistance has come up about group study exchange. We, especially in the United States, have been very passionate about that. Group study exchange is not being eliminated. It's being redirected. And there has been a new type of group study exchange created that comes on the global grant side called the vocational. Now, a little kid, John here, you know, he mentioned about it could be all doctors, all what, police officers. He didn't mention all lawyers. I can't understand why he didn't say that. We don't want to contaminate the rest of the world. <laughs> I suspect that the same myself. Uh, he didn't want us going and changing the governments of the world, I guess. But um, the point I make is that, you know, what you're doing today is not going to change that much. And as John mentioned, the six areas of focus, if you really look at those, and those, the, the foundation is working through with staff as far as how they analyze and put things within those areas, most anything that your clubs will be doing are going to fit within one of those areas of focus. So yeah, it may be a little bit more challenging that you've got to, in the past, you could target, you could have a project and you didn't have to think about which area of focus it would fall in. But if you 
think about those six areas of focus, most anything that you're going to want to do, your community or worldwide is going to fall in that. So I just, you know, all of us, you know, change comes difficult, you know, we're apprehensive about change. And while it seems like it's a dramatic change and a redirection and all like that, it's not that different. It is creating some different thought processes. And, you know, clearly, you know, there have been several uh, examples of the joint project being worked on. Uh, my district in Alabama and one of the Tennessee districts. And the sustainability was an issue as far as being able to have that written up. That's, going, that's a buzzword as far as on the global grant side, the sustainability. But that's probably good. Because you want to give your money to something that goes down, pardon the pun, a hole or a well that isn't going to work and it isn't going to be there and your money was wasted away because in a year it didn't have sustainability. So really if you think about the term sustainability, it's really more of a stewardship term in my opinion. <coughs> the other part of that other than GSC is to ambassador or scholars because there's a lot of places people here that sponsor ambassador or scholars. You can still do ambassador or scholars. They just come out of your district club. If you want to do the unnamed yet scholar uh, program, uh, it'll be named for June. <laughs> But there's a future vision committee meeting in June because there's still a lot of planning work to go on this. Then that will come out of the global side. So you, the myth that you cannot do these things is not true. You can do basically everything you want to do. The sustainability issue is critical. If you uh, take one of your grants that says, uh, to help provide water filtration systems to eight schools in rural areas uh, in Thailand. Well, so you provide, you put up the money. You have a water filtration system. Who maintains it? Do you have an agreement with the utility company there? Do you have an agreement with the government or some other? firm that's going to maintain it. Because I don't think you want your money spent for a filtration system to get approved and then two years later there's nobody knows how to replace the filters or what to do with them. So that's the sustainability issue in a real simple Often I've heard from various clubs of the uh, People say, well, you know, we, we give to the foundation, but we also, we, we want to give more locally. Uh, the foundation is such an international organization, and these grants are international. None of it comes back to us. Well, there are ways it can come back to us. And I think just this week, we've seen that the foundation is flexible. Uh, in granting uh, or approving a request to establish a grant that will affect people in our six districts. Uh, John, could you elaborate on that a little bit, please? Uh, let me go back to when we had Katrina. The first money, excuse me, the first money that came in uh, to help Katrina, the victims of Katrina, was five hundred thousand dollars from Japan. We received money from all over the world for Katrina. What I'm uh, talking about is that when the disasters came through Alabama, there was a disaster relief fund established uh, by the Rotary Foundation, where people could give money to that fund to help uh, those victims that, from that tornado there. Uh, we recently approved uh, renaming that, and it now is going to become a, uh, I think we'll call it the Southeast uh, Disaster Relief. And uh, Ken has a, a, a memo that we're going to be working on here to end up changing that so funds can come in 
and then they could be utilized for Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, or any of the areas uh, that get affected, not just those three, but in those areas that get affected in our part of the country uh, for disaster. So, and you'll find that the people outside the United States are usually very generous uh, about contributing. If you take the disaster that just happened in Japan, uh, they are still sending money into the United States uh, in order to help with some of our disasters that we've had here recently. Uh, Germany has sent in uh, some money. Ken talked about uh, India and Brazil. Those are what we call restricted currency countries. The money that is raised there because of their country laws has to be spent within that country. Uh, right now there's a balance in India of about $7 million and in uh, Brazil it's about $6 million uh, U.S. money that had this, has to stay in that country. So what happens is with uh, India, for example, is the easy one because we're spending so much money there for polio that it's spent out of their funds. We don't send money over there. We don't send money over there for their uh, matching grants. Uh, that's all being spent out of money they raised there in India right now is the third largest giving country to the Rotary Foundation. Same thing happens in uh, Brazil and it happens in uh, uh, white. So there's about five uh, restricted currency countries. So that money stays there but we don't send money there. They spend their money. So. Somewhat they can say they're similar to us in the fact that they don't get inflow into their countries uh, except when they run out of money over that deficit fund. I'd just like to follow up a little bit on what John was saying because it was a real eye-opener back when the tree hit our area. If you think about it, we really had not in at least the southern United States had a disaster that was brought in recent times to the forefront. It was a very humbling experience. Uh, John was a director at that time, and Bob Stewart had just come, uh, was uh, coming off, and there was a five-member group, John and I, Bob Stewart, Don Collett, and Glenn Sterling were the trustees, so to speak, of a fund that was established and I'll, I'll tell you this, I, it, it really opened my eyes and my heart. You know, I thought we'd raise, or we set up what's called a donor advised fund to help benefit the Katrina relief. And that got set up very quickly through the foundation. And I was thinking we'd get $100,000, $200,000. Well, this was publicized so well throughout the Rotary world. The money started coming in. We hit three hundred, and then five hundred. And then 800, and all of a sudden we're at a million, and I, I was just amazed. We ended up with close to 1.8 to 2 million dollars that came into that fund. We spent the better part of 18 months after it uh, receiving projects throughout the Gulf Coast where it was affected, basically parlaying the money, having communities match, and divvy that up for projects that we felt the Rotarians would be happy with with their their money went for. We turned some down. We didn't feel like it was something that um, we thought Rotarians would be pleased with their how their funds were being used. One that comes to my mind, it was not a bad project. It just didn't seem to us, or at least to me, uh, that it was appropriate. It was to help support the Jazz Festival and, and get it back established and going uh, down in New Orleans. I mean, a very worthwhile tourism related and all like that. Nothing, no problem, but that didn't seem to be, be what the Americans probably contributed their money for. So that was divvied up. I give you that background because John mentioned this, and you think about back in World War II and Hiroshima and all like that, the largest contributor to that was came from Japan. That told me a lot. I get goosebumps when I think about it. That here, a country that we had devastated with an atomic bomb, when we were in need, was one of the largest contributors to help our Gulf Coast. Well, what's happened with that, because I did kid at the time, because while 
John was on the board of directors of my partner, Mark was on the trustees. And I told Mark as this money started coming in, I said, the trustees are not going to like the fact that these five of us that I've named, here we've got almost $2 billion we control to divvy out. And how it came in through the foundation, they go, wait a minute, you know, we got a whole board of trustees running the foundation, and these rebels down here in the southeast, they're getting all this money in. Well, lo and behold, we, because of what happened there, I think has laid the groundwork for the future disasters where the Rotary Foundation has come back to create relief for disaster areas and allow that to be established. And the, you know, for example, and the, the title here, it's a nice short one uh, that's been redone, the Rotary Southern United States Tornado Disaster Recovery Fund Agreement. That's what I've got here. But it's, it's going to allow us, what John was saying is, while money, there's about $58,000 in that. And this is money that there was in Alabama set up and in Joplin, Missouri set up. And I know John Adams is doing this in Kentucky right now for the tornadoes. What's called donor advised funds. Each of these areas had those that received money. This was additional money that came in from around the world, that came in from what's called uh, DDF, where districts transferred you know, funds that had been used for something into this. And John and I are going to be talking about how we can best utilize this for the affected areas here in the southern United States. But I think you can be proud, you know, we've been trendsetters so to speak. I, I, I wish we didn't have to be the trendsetter, but when the disaster affected us, we jumped up, got ready. People, you know, many of you, your clubs helped, projects were done, and people's lives were changed, and we got people back. Thank you. Uh, now you've explained how we can spend the money could you maybe give uh, these president elects a couple of tips that uh, how they might be able to squeeze a few more bucks out of uh, some of their members uh, so that they can exceed the gold sheets that they turned in to, or get ready to turn into their governor elect for next year? Well, there's there's all kinds of things. I mean, there's hands-on, uh, there's fundraisers. The, very simple thing that's been uh, established, I think, um, in many clubs. Uh, it needs to be voluntary, but to put on a due statement. Many of us are accustomed to contributing to our church and our United Way, our colleges. Uh, you know, the Rotary Foundation isn't a one-time gift to become a Paul Harris fellow. The, the needs, the programs are annual. And what we need, Rotarians, you know, the, the original concept to be a sustained member of the Rotary Foundation was to give $25 a quarter, $100 a year, uh, thereby over a 10-year period you'd reach $1,000 and you would become a Paul Harris Fellow and you would continue to do that. You know, some people can give more, some can give less, but it's very simple. A lot of clubs, my clubs, one of them puts on your dues statement. You know, voluntary contribution to the Rotary Foundation. And it was $25, it's now $35, and like that. And we have like 70% of our members that just do that. That's a, just on a quarterly basis, that adds up, it goes into the Rotary Foundation and allows these programs and projects. But there's all kinds of things, I mean, uh, collecting quarters at club meetings, I mean, doing, we did, for matching grants, we were doing something in Celaya, Mexico. We had a Mexican fiesta. Um, probably the biggest issue is it's easy to get Rotarians to give. The more challenging thing is to buy into your community and get non-Rotarians to support something. And that's what I really challenge you as club presidents. Look at something that, one, gets public relations, PR, Rotary's name out in your community and get your community to support the Rotary Foundation, to support your projects, your programs in your community. 
Gentlemen, thank you for taking time to be with us up here this morning.